We all know the saying, the truth hurts. But I like to think that the truth also transforms. To me, living in truth means being yourself, unapologetically, and fostering relationships that allow you to be authentic. Truth means knowing what you stand for, and just as importantly, what you don't put up with. Truth is knowing yourself above all else and allowing that knowledge to guide your decision making. And for so long, I thought I was living in my truth, but I was not. I was actually allowing my trauma to dictate how I thought, how I behaved, and who I allowed into my life. I did not understand how deeply affected I was by the things going on in my family, and I could never anticipate <laughs> how much of an impact it would all have on my life. And that is what I want to unpack here with you today. As I walk you through my experiences and my relationship with dysfunction, think about the painful moments in your life that have stuck with you and why. I want you to understand that you are so much stronger than your trauma and that it does not have to define you the way I let mine define me for so long. Are you one of the 70 to 80% of Americans who identify with having some sort of dysfunction in their family? I am. I want you to understand that if you can relate to anything I'm saying here today, it does not make you less capable, less successful, or less worthy. You are only acknowledging what has happened in your own life to shape your experiences of the world. You are living in what you believe to be true. And for so long, I was doing the same thing. Nothing could have prepared me for what I learned about my family at just 15 years old. My mom was the one who broke the news to me that her biological father was not the man who I had grown up calling granddaddy. Her father was actually a minister who preached at her family's church for a short time in the 60s. I used to jokingly tell friends that the story was like something you'd see in a Lifetime movie because humor has always helped me cope with my feelings. But I wouldn't come to understand the full gravity of the situation until much later in life. When I was coming to the understanding that the loud, jovial, very Southern family I had grown up in was not as perfect as it seemed, but was in fact full of trauma, broken boundaries, and undeniable abuse, my heart was shattered. The anguish, confusion, and rage led me to completely shutting down and internalizing everything. My mom was dealing with her own trauma, so I made it my mission to not add to her stress and pain. I tried my best to live as close to a normal teenage life as I could, but I had this never-ending feeling of dread that now lingered over me constantly. My outlook on life was permanently changed. This newfound truth caused me to question everything and re-examine the moments in my life that had caused me to form a belief. If you have ever felt unsure of what you want, what actually matters to you, or how you want to live your life because of what you've experienced, you are not alone. My very first memory is of my parents fighting. It's all a bit fuzzy and it doesn't matter what the fight was about. What matters is how I internalized this moment. I believed that my parents were happy and in love and that they would be together forever. When they got divorced, I was very young but I still understood that a truth I believed was wrong. And even though neither of them ever told me so, I believed to the core of my being that this was somehow my fault. Now I see that I felt that way because I would only ever see them talk when it was about me. And a lot of times there was a palpable tension I felt I had caused. They wouldn't have to talk or fight at all if I wasn't in the picture. Therefore, my truth became that I was the problem. The only way I could fix the problem, or so I thought, was to change my behaviors to mirror the preferences of the parent I was spending time with. In other words, I was a classic codependent. I know that my parents were doing their absolute best to give me everything they could, and I never doubted how much they loved me. But that did not change the fact that I grew increasingly convinced that expressing my own wants and needs would be seen as a burden, and that if I invited more stress, I would only be adding to the instability to the already chaotic lives my parents were living. It was an exhausting thought cycle to be stuck in, and I wouldn't begin to unpack that narrative until I realized just how toxic my family was. For the better part of my teens and early 20s, 
Part of my truth had become that a happy, healthy relationship could fix all of my problems. That little girl that saw her parents fighting all the time had grown up and she decided that she wanted to live a stable life and she wanted to have somebody to share it with. But first, I want to back up and take you to that little girl's life, show you what she saw so that you can understand the decisions I made later in life. When I was a little girl, I would spend a lot of time at my maternal grandmother's house. And we would usually be there for big holidays. And it was Thanksgiving. I was spending my time with my cousins who felt more like sisters. And we were all talking about what we wanted our life to look like when we were grown up. I decided to make my announcement to everyone, including the adults in the kitchen that were getting ready for dinner, that when I grew up, I was going to, and I quote, get married for a couple of years, have a baby, get a divorce, and travel the world. <laughs> my family would always share a huge laugh when remembering how confident and serious I was when I made this announcement. And I would laugh along with them because their laughter was contagious. But it always made me sad for that little girl who saw so much chaos and divorce in her family that she thought it was just the natural order of things. On my mom's side of the family, everyone, and I mean everyone, had been through multiple divorces and toxic relationships. A narrative of impermanence began to build in my mind because of how they would deal with these things. My family would always laugh and joke about their choices and partners, and it made it all seem like a big joke. So I thought that it was normal for chaos and that commitment was temporary. On my dad's side of the family, things appeared to be more normal, but that's only because conversations were kept at surface level and emotions were the absolute last thing ever discussed. All of these dynamics led to a very confusing template for my own relationships, but most importantly, it impacted the relationship that I have with myself. So to later in life, when I was ready to create a stable life for myself and I wanted someone to share it with. There was a huge problem. I didn't know myself or love myself at all. And I was desperate for someone to accept me. I lived a life that seemed totally normal, busy, but something just felt wrong all the time. I carried this feeling of guilt around and I had no idea why. So when I met my ex-husband, who was wrought with his own unhealed trauma and shame and guilt, it felt like we were kindred spirits destined to collide and build a life together. Things moved really fast with us. So whenever we would talk about future plans, we would both reiterate how we just wanted things to feel peaceful and normal. So I did everything I could to be the person he could see living that life with. My desperation for his acceptance made me completely blind to the very obvious issues that were right in front of me. My family and friends definitely realized and tried to notice, tried to let me know what they noticed and that something was not quite right. But I was determined to prove that our love was the real thing. So we got married on our one year anniversary and the hardest four years of my life followed that decision. I allowed boundary after boundary to be broken and I was constantly exhausted, stressed and in survival mode because I was not being authentic to myself at all. My family and friends continued to try to talk to me, but I just wouldn't listen. The only saving grace was my beautiful son who arrived in 2018. When I held him for the first time, I made him a promise that I would do everything I could to give him a life that he deserves. But there was still a huge problem. I wasn't living the life I deserved. About a year after he was born and so many moments of confusion, exhaustion, self-doubt, and self-sabotage, I knew that I had to make one of the hardest decisions of my life in order to keep that promise to my son. I had to leave my marriage. I began to see that relationship for what it was, toxic, codependent, and built on a very faulty foundation. It was time to get to know myself and love myself because if I could, I knew I could make my life look and feel the way I wanted it to. So the very first thing I did was go to therapy. It was my fourth session when my therapist asked me the question that changed my perspective permanently. Are you more comfortable in chaos than you are in peace? At first, I was extremely triggered by this question, but my therapist encouraged me to really think about it and explained that people who are raised in toxic environments don't just magically create healthy relationships with themselves or other people once they're on their own. 
In fact, it is more likely that they mimic what they were raised around. Of course, I had read about this concept before, but I was terrified of asking myself the hard questions because I just did not want to know the answers. My next few therapy sessions were spent breaking down the patterns of my family that were made to feel normal and funny. I realized I had been raised around people who were terrified of looking at their unhealed traumas and would rather laugh and make a big joke out of everything. They would rather move on and not talk about how to do better moving forward. I came to understand that for my entire life, I had been made to feel like my wants and needs were a burden. I was terrified of using my voice if it meant speaking up for others, if it meant speaking up for myself, but I had no problem using it to speak up for others. And I realized that what could happen if I used my own voice was powerful. Not using it was more detrimental than what could happen if I did. And so little by little, I started taking steps to make my life look and feel the way I wanted it to. And it has been terrifying and liberating and powerful. The biggest thing I've learned to manage is my anxiety. When toxicity becomes the norm, the brain is trained to be on guard constantly. I used to let my anxiety run my life all the time. However, I no longer let one bad day define the rest of them. As I've come to know myself and understand myself and love myself, I have come to have compassion and empathy for myself that I used to only allow for other people. I'm able to set boundaries and enforce them, which is a practice I didn't even understand until a few years ago. I know now that my intuition, which is strong, I ignored it for so long, and I know it's supposed to be embraced because it is a form of trust, not only in my current self, but in my higher self. I have come to know that loving yourself and knowing you're worth it is not easy, but if you can do it, it will change your life. I want you to take what I have shared here today and use it as a magnifying glass on your own life. Ask yourself where you may be giving away your power, your priorities, and your purpose, whatever that purpose may be. I want you to understand that no one chooses to experience trauma, but we can choose to navigate the fallout from those experiences with compassion and empathy for ourselves. I want you to understand that you are so much stronger than your trauma and that it does not have to define you. I want you to know that taking the very first step can change your entire life. Thank you so much for believing in yourself. Don't forget, the world needs you.